I was going to put together a whole dissertation for this, man. But, you know, I'm just going to jump right into it. I saw in Detroit that um, there was a there was a rally. You can't escape this presidential election. And I'm not even going to go there. But what I will say, I was a little surprised with uh, when I heard the news that Eminem was going to be introducing um, President Barack Obama at in Detroit. A few things crossed my mind, right? We're talking about a swing state, you know, yada, yada. Michigan's a swing state, and normally Democrats are going towards the urban areas, as, you know, we've seen in maps, you know, when you're watching CNN during election night. So Detroit is really key for them. And Detroit's about 75% Black. And so I was like, okay, well, is Eminem being brought out to attain Black folk in Detroit? I don't know. You know, that was interesting enough in itself. It's like, okay, who is this uh, superstar at Eminem, um, you know, going to galvanize? Oh, Tater Todd says, here comes some hate. Okay. Okay, here we go. Now, here comes some truth. Well, couple of weeks before, a couple of days before, we were talking about misogyny. And a lot of the misogyny has been brought up uh, when it comes to this, you know, the, this uh, cycle, as it should, you know, um, because it is a, we can't escape that. But I would argue, and maybe he's atoned for this in ways that I haven't seen before or heard before, but I would argue from a mainstream standpoint, Eminem is the most misogynist rapper of all time. And I'm not just saying this. I want to I wanna get some of his quotes to actually support that point. And let me know if I'm tripping. So I went for a few digs and, um, you know, and, and got a few quotes to kind of prove that point or at least try to make that point. And again, people in the chat act like, you know, let me know if I'm tripping or whatnot. Thumbs up in the chat, everybody. Uh, Here's a lyric. Three things I hate. Girls, women, and bitches. Um, these are Eminem's quotes, by the way. Uh, I got another one here. Causing terror to Christina Aguilera when I grab her by the hair and drag her across the Sahara. Yeah, violence against women, you know. Um, just another day in the office for Eminem. Here's another one. Uh, let's see. Rip off Pamela Anderson's boobs and smack her so hard that I knock her clothes backwards like crisscross. Hmm. We got another one here. We got uh, play nice, B. I'll punch uh, Lana Del Rey in the face twice like Ray Rice in broad daylight in plain sight on elevator elevator surveillance till her head is banging on the rail. Then celebrate with the Ravens. Wow. That's wild, man. You know, first of all, first of all, it's interesting that individuals in leadership and with so much character could ignore. Maybe they don't know these lyrics exist. I don't know. Maybe they don't. The hate is real. Am I wrong? These are his lyrics. What, what's what's the hate about this? This is these are his lyrics. Okay, I got another one. This is from Kill You, two thousand. Slut, you don't think I won't choke no whore until the vocal cords don't work in the slut no more? I mean, all right, I got another one. Oh, Kim, yeah, this one's tough. Uh, don't you get it, bitch? No one can hear you. Now shut up, shut the F up, and get what's coming to you. I just think it's interesting that this stuff gets ignored. How, how does this get ignored? Okay, got another one. Uh, let's see. I I, I don't even want to repeat this one. This is from this is from um the Compton album where he said, "I even make the bitches I rape come." Come on, man! Like, how could anybody stand next to a, a rapper that says any of this? Yeah, what are we doing? Yeah, London, what are we doing exactly? And why doesn't this actually get addressed? Because you know what? At the end of the day, if Jay-Z says some of these things, he would never live it down. He can't even live down the, the song Big Pippin'. You think Jay-Z would get away with, with uh, rapping these type of lyrics? Like, come on, man. 
Like, let's be serious here. And the fact that you guys or some of the people in the room feel like I'm tripping for even highlighting this. No, you're tripping for trying to get past this. Like, okay, we're supposed to ignore this. Why? Why are we supposed to ignore this? And everyone's talking about misogyny as they should because it's a thing. But this is clearly the most misogynist rapper the mainstream has ever seen. You talk about violence against women. I got more. I got more. He says, uh, I go schizo. I get so I get so insane that I just go schizo. One minute I want to slit your throat. The next, uh, the next I want sex. Mall Seven says, get Eminem the F out of here. All right, here's another one. It says, uh, which would explain why you're uh such a si oh no, this is it. I'm sorry, I didn't start at the beginning of the quote. It says, they say that every man grows up to marry his own mother, which explains why you're such a mother effer B. But I still stay and I still uh, stick it out, even though I hit you today. But you deserve it. Hit me first and provoke me to choke you. What? <laughs> What's my point? My point is the fact that this gets ignored. And this is hypocrisy at its finest. And if you if you don't see the hypocrisy in this, you really think that if Jay-Z, Nas, or somebody like that would have spoke these lyrics or spit these lyrics, that they would just put them on platforms next to uh, next to presidents to actually speak on this? Come on, man. Uh, we got another one. We got another one. And, I, and I'll stop because clearly you guys don't want to hear this part of the truth. That's how we're going to start this show. Says, uh, now I don't want to hit no woman, but oh, here it is. Oh, this one's this one's tough. Says, now I don't want to hit no woman, but this chick's got it coming. Someone better get this B before I kick her in the stomach and she's pregnant, but she's uh egging me on, begging me to throw her uh off the steps of, of this porch with the weapon in, is for where the weapon is for when my weapon is for, excuse me. And I don't want to resort to violence or any sort, though uh, she's shoving me. What's she shoving me for? B, doesn't she love me no more? Wasn't she hugging me four minutes ago at the door? Man, I'm so close I'm to going toe-to-toe -to -toe with this whore. Come on, man. Uh, listen, man, if you guys want to excuse that, that's fine. Uh, again, my point is, I think that if we're going to uh, talk about misogyny in this race, which is a valid point, I think that it should be noted that Eminem is the most misogynist rapper of all time. And I wish that he would at least go out there and acknowledge those wrongs and, and then move forward with it. But the fact that we just sweep these things under the rug, I think it's just unfair to the culture altogether. Now, maybe I'm tripping. Siobhan, you in the building. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, we got Magneto in the building. That that is so cool, man. You know what? You is Magnegro. Magnegro. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Thumbs up in the chat. Happy Halloween, everybody out there. Yes, yes, yes. So, am I tripping? And if it's even something that needs to be brought up, do we need to continue to sweep um, Eminem's misogyny under the rug? I'm gonna take my helmet off for people can hear my thoughts. Mm hmm. <sighs> All right, Mike, I can't agree with you, brother. And the reason yeah. why is because we could say M's lyrics are outrageous, they're crazy, they're everywhere, misogynistic, violent, all of the above. But we also have to realize Eminem has clearly put it in perspective that the Eminem character, the Slim Shady character is uh, a character. Such a fucking cop out. I hate that. No. And it is no. a cop out. It is. No, okay, so like was, it, was it Slim Shady who was endorsing our president or was let, it Eminem? Let, let, let me get to it. Let me mm. get to it. The character, the Slim Shady is a character. And we know he gets away with lyrics that black artists can't say because they'll be ripped for Mm -hmm. But there's even hypocrisy in your point because Snoop has an album called Doggy Style, mm -hmm. 
which is probably one of the most misogynistic albums in hip hop. Yeah. And we see him at the Olympics. We see him doing shows with Martha Stewart. We seen him shaking hands and kissing babies, coaching youth football. Well, yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. We don't hold I'm that not, against him at all, let you just, Hold on, hold on, time out. I'm not going to let you just say that. Um, give me lyrics that that rival any of these lyrics that I'm putting forth. Here. It may not have to be violence towards women, but this is a guy who has a song, Bitches Ain't Shit But Holes and Tricks. I knew you were going to go I grew there. up off doggy style. I knew you Make were going to no go there. The homies can't get none. If we're going to talk about gonna go there. Man, Well, then, I will say this. If you want to sit here and say, bitches ain't shit, I mean, listen. One could come from a standpoint, I'm not talking about women. I'm talking about bitches, right? And again, it's still misogyny, but to say... Three things I hate, girls, women, and bitches, is way different. Mike. That covers the whole spectrum. We can cover a whole slew of rappers from then until now that has misogynistic lyrics that are against women. Hip-hop has been accused of being misogynistic. That's not me being an apologist for it, but if you're going to use that as your point against him, that applies to damn near any rapper that are doing things that have grown outside of music. Right. Well, the thing, I think the thing that makes him different than a say, let's just say a Snoop. Snoop has lyrics about, you know what I'm saying, going toe to toe with dudes, right? And this guy repeatedly has had lyrics about just really basically knuckling up with women. And we've even seen that, you know, even when it comes to his battles, even when it comes to his riffs, his back and forth. Like he clearly has issue with women. I mean, he said it in his lyrics, even it comes from his mommy issues and all of those things. He clearly has a violent issue when it comes to women. He doesn't have any love songs in his catalog. At least Snoop has beautiful. At least Snoop has songs like perfect. You know what I mean? Like, so you provide that level of balance. Like when we talk about with Tupac, right? There is some, yes, there's some misogyny there, but there's also a keep your head up. There's also a level of balance where it's like, okay, yeah, I've felt this way before, but this is another side of it. With him, it's just all one way. So, he doesn't Mike, like women. Mike, you want to know what the correlation? I hate to do this because I love these guys, but Dre has been on camera punching a woman in the face and he's performing at the Super Bowl. Well, I, well, I'll give you Dre. I think the common denominator. I'm gonna be honest with you. The common denominator actually is Dre. You but there's a doggy he style. Came from NWA. He came from NWA. Exactly. Common denominator. He had misogynistic again. lyrics that are only talked about women, but talked about violence against women as well. I agree. Again, so, common denominator is Dre. I get. I'm with you on that. And Easy was in the White House. <laughs> you know what I'm but saying? Again, when Easy got to... away from Dre, and when Snoop got away from Dre, and when Cube got away from Dre, the misogyny kind of goes away a little bit. It's and not as hardcore also, as it is when they were with Dre. Mike, we can't apply one to him because of a dislike and not apply it to others. There's don't a character. That. I don't dislike the guy. I these are extreme. You don't think these are more extreme than the other cases you're talking about? That's like saying one sin is worse than the next. You know what I'm saying? I like, don't know, man. We're, we're, we're These talking are extreme. We're, we're, we've talking about we have artists that have lyrics that still have been against women. It may not be no extreme, but they have talked about violence against against women. They have talked about uh, uh, sexualizing women. They have talking about just demonizing in a way that is less than respectful of a woman, but. We have to we we separate the music for the people we like. We love Snoop. We love Snoop doing the uh, Olympics. We love Snoop doing a show with Martha Stewart. We love him everywhere. Snoop. We even said he's an ambassador. We should look at him as an ambassador of hip hop, right? These are I artists. never said that per se, but you know, I mean, Snoop is he's the most popular of rapper of all this time. Time, of all time. Get well, I think when I when I say ambassador of hip hop, I look I look at somebody like a Nas, right? Who kind of encompasses all of the. But when I say ambassador, but I know what you mean. Yeah, you As know what I mean. Snoop is it, there's my grandma knows Snoop. <clears throat> White people know Snoop. People over the country know Snoop. Snoop is probably the most popular rapper of all time, and we can go back to lyrics 
where that's misogynistic. Rip so, all right, so you're correlating calling, you know, someone a bitch to basically talking about beating and killing a woman, basically the same thing. Bro, Snoop's lyrics today will get picked apart and canceled. Not to this degree. So you're yes, telling me Snoop, so Snoop has a record. What, what do you think Snoop's, you think he oh, will be out here doing the Olympics? It ain't no fun. Snoop, Snoop, can't get no. Get no. We can't talk about that. Hold on. You're, you're correlating that, that. You're correlating that to a song about killing your child's mother. Do you think that, how do you think that Snoop's image would be when it comes to the whole Martha Stewart thing, the Olympics and all that, if he made a song like him? I don't like the record. Uh, it's not about like the record. I'm talking about. You can't move the goalposts, bro. I'm not moving the goalposts. He made him. Like moving the goalposts, Mike, because there are how is that moving the goalposts? Have done stuff outside of music that has lyrics that are questionable that would not fly today. That are just equally as bad. Him is more than questionable. I get it. It's a crazy record. I've never liked it. <laughs> I've never liked it. But if we go down the slew of rappers that have done things that disrespected women, said about women, or even physically have done things against women, because a lot of stuff get ripped under the rug when we start looking at cases that people got, allegations that people have, and everything. We'll be going down a rabbit hole of these artists that we love when we look to a certain and there, there's certain ways outside of the music. One thing I could say that correlates with him, he's always involved himself with speaking out against something political he doesn't like. Let's talk about Square Dance on the Eminem show. He called out Bush. He's no friend of Bush. He says that in a line, bro. Yeah, what he's does that even mean? Like, that. Did he say why? Yes, he, he has a whole verse dedicated to, to on Square Dance when he's talking about what's going on uh, or white America when he's talking about this. It, it's, it's stuff that he talks about on the Eminem show where it's multiple times he denounced himself against Bush. You got bars? You got bars? Because I got bars here. Slut, you think I won't choke no whore to the vocal cord? Hey, man, we can go back to that, but the fact of the matter is Eminem drew a line mm -hmm. in the sand of what he doesn't align himself about. There's a character... But he aligns himself... So, I don't... Honestly, man, I don't care what he aligns himself with if he aligns himself with killing his child's mother. I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? Like, but what? what I'm saying is, Mike, <laughs> Mike, you're pushing a point that could be used to any other rapper that does stuff outside of music that has questionable bars that can't be accepted today that has been against women, bro. We can't uh -oh, let's, that. Let's see what Jermaine. Have... My bad. I mean to cut you off. Let me get to the super chat. Jermaine Johnson says, unfortunately, the uh, precedent has changed. Anyone that's voting for Trump uh, while simultaneously pretending to be outraged by M's lyric is full of itch. No one said anything like that. I'm just saying that I think that when we talk about code of conduct, when we talk about, um, like I said, double standards, right? We see it all the time. Politicians won't even align themselves with certain individuals based on, you know, their content. And when you said the Easy e White House thing, even when Easy e uh, you know, was able to purchase that, that table um, at the White House to have uh, dinner for a benefit, he used his real name and they claim they didn't even know it was him showing up. You know, they, you know, he paid for a ticket just like anybody else. Um, but we've seen many of times that, you know, certain people just aren't good for business, as you say, right? I don't see how if we're we're talking about these topics and we're talking about, you know, misogyny being such a problem as it is, I don't see how someone like this with a record like this and with lyrics like this can even be on the same stage. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's my point. It's the, just, it just the, seems, the, the, it, it feels the, like if it was future, if it was future or somebody like that, then we would be calling these things out. They, they even have blamed future for young men overdosing. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, Mike. uh, <laughs> my, <laughs> You do understand that there are rappers that have stuff within their lyrics that is not great. It's not great for the youth. It's not great against women. It's not that have went on and spoke in things in politics that have done things as beneficial and philanthropy. There's been a lot of things. And there's a slew of artists we can name that has questionable lyrics. What is Easy es best, uh, uh, like his introduction song? Cruising down the streets in my sits foe. What's the next line? Yeah. Who wrote that? Q. 
What did Q who did you want that, to sit though. down and talk about? But you know what? You, you know what? Siobhan, who produced that though? Again, we got a common denominator here. It has nothing to do with a correlation to Dre. It has it everything does it? to do. Every it example you're giving me, Dre is involved. What 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 it all comes down to, Mike, is we can't apply that to one person and not apply it to the other. When there's real rappers that have really done things outside of the lyrics, there are rappers that still raps about that within the lyrics that have stood foot in these boardrooms and done things in business that have done things that are aligning with politics. Look at Plaz, man. He's one of a Kamala's biggest supporters right now. And Plaz has past music talking about a bunch of shit that, that, that Kamala wouldn't want to stand next to. Right. He's independently supporting them. You can't go out there and, you know, ask somebody to not support you, but it's different when they actually put you on stage and it's talking about, Oh man, I love me some Eminem. It's like, okay, you you love these lyrics? You know what I'm saying? Like, because really, if you want to say that, and again, I'm I'm speaking to the balance part of it all. What lyrics does he have to counterbalance this nonsense? So you want to know what? Let's take the woman point out of this. We can. Let's, no, no, we have to. <laughs> no, we have to. Because we can. No, when you're out, out here talking about going, about we have to. over your 20-year career, when you're talking about squaring up with women consistently when you're in your 20s, your 30s, your 40s, right. and your 50s, we can't take that out of it. Right. Just, just, just to further my point, bro, just taking the women lyrics out of it, is it any better of any rappers that talk about violence against our own black people and still align with that type of stuff? Listen, man. No, I'm not no, I'm serious. About like, no, no, no. You have I'm rappers not. that talk about killing each other, that's talking about uh doing stuff to others, all that. What why would any politician such as Kamala want to line her way up to that? Plus has a slew of violence that's talking about robbing and jacking and running down on niggas, and he's one of the most outspoken on that. And we could separate well, the character well, from that. Why can well, we do listen, that? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to be 100 here. Uh Tater Toss of the Super Chat says Magneto is whooping your ass on this Eminem topic. Listen, I want to be 100 here. When they brought out Quavo in Atlanta, I thought that was ridiculous too. And we no, not even Quavo in Atlanta. When when they were talking about when he was talking about gun violence and this and that, and he talks all his gun violence in his lyrics, has done it over time, still does it. And you want to talk about gun violence and how much of it, it's a problem. Now, it's kind of a mute point when you have somebody who is the voice of something like that, who has made a career on gun violence. I've been consistent on that. I'm saying the same thing when it comes to Eminem and misogyny. That's all I'm saying. But it's the same thing. Why those other artists that have aligned themselves with likes that, we, we don't make them synonymous to that when it comes to those other artists, but with him, this is what you're saying. There's things that have been more detrimental to this society and black society that Kamala won't want to stand next to either. Like Again, that doesn't ignore the again i don't understand why we got to deflect to other people when we're talking the about why we have his lyrics because you know what i mean his lyrics are, i i would i would argue that his lyrics are more egregious than any other mc's lyrics especially from a mainstream standpoint when we're talking about the big big guys i'm not talking about people who make underground hits and this and that this man has sold more records than everybody when we talk about the people who have sold the most who are the most notable in hip hop culture? He has the most egregious lyrics ever. Mike Snoop is a known crip. Talked okay. about talked about violence, shooting, killing. Even had a murder trial that he was acquitted for. We see Snoop. Yeah, he was acquitted do we for. associate Snoop? Do we associate Snoop with that today? No, because you okay. know what? Snoop has changed his image, and I think that honestly, when we think about and we've said this on previous shows too. When folks talk about, you know, he ain't gonna make another doggy style, he got one classic, yada, yada. I think Snoop took a hit musically to get out of the gangster shit. You know what I'm saying? To make something that was more than that and to grow. Yeah, he not gonna make Serial Killer now. He's not gonna make Serial Killer in his 30s. Again, Rhythm and Gangster is one of my favorite Snoop albums, probably my second favorite Snoop al uh, album. Because he was able to make a let's get blown. He was able to make, you know what I'm saying, drop it like it's hot was cool. 
even though he had some, you know, gangster shit in there, here and there, but he had, you know, perfect on there. He was changing as an artist. This artist has never done that. This artist has the same shock and awe lyrics that he had since day one and then hides it behind some Slim Shady character or some bullshit. But it's you. So one thing one thing I want to say to you as well, Mike. All right. So say we want to apply that to M. So let's talk about the things that kind of it set offsets that a little bit. Let's talk about M has three daughters, one adopted, the other one um is gender fluid, right? He has anti-gay lyrics in his stuff and all of that yeah. stuff, but he has a daughter who he supports openly, has a song on his last album that's dedicated to that, has always dedicated stuff talking about his daughters, talking about that. We the Eminem we know today is not the Eminem's that's in the, in those lyrics, bro. We've seen him legitimize himself. We have. We've really? seen him He's always double talked though, because he even when he had songs dedicated to his daughter, he was still talking down on women on those same albums. So Mike. it's um I don't know, man. It doesn't line up. I mean, it, he he obviously has some internal conflict oh. there. And really, I mean, he, he he doesn't like women. Let's just keep it real. So if that's if, if we're gonna hold him to that same standard, we gotta hold every other artist that aligns himself to something positive to that standard. We have I mean, dirt. That that's fine. If you got lyrics like these, I mean, that's fine. I mean, well, look, look, we have to separate the art from the person, bro. We do. And we seriously do because what's we, artistic about kicking a pregnant woman in the stomach and throwing Mike, it out. We there. have to separate the art. It, it doesn't matter if you think the art is bad. We cannot agree. That's it, art is left up for our interpretation. Well, we it's not even bad. It's you know, reason why we, and it's, I mean, at what point do we say, you know what, that's just that's just out of hand. And, and the reason we have to separate the art from it is because we could literally apply this to any other rapper in hip hop that has said things that is not favorable against women, violence. All of that goes in the bucket of being bad shit. But if you use the same point, we have to use that to a lot of other rappers, bro. I'm cool. And I'm just saying be consistent, man, because my thing is we never use that point with him ever. We always talk about hip hop being misogynistic, but we always show the same rappers they never talk about him and his misogyny it's the truth like when we talk when we have that conversation we they show the video vixen somebody slapping ass and this and that but they never sit there and talk about these lyrics and these things that have been said by this rapper let he me let me stop a whole you. different thing he gets he gets paraded like he didn't say any of this stuff like lose yourself's his only record or something like that's the only record he got but here's the thing Black people wasn't doing that to him. Eminem was getting picket signs. People out there with a CD stepping on them. They, they try to censor him. You know Let's what, not get listen, the controversy listen. behind them trying to stop him early. I lived in that era. I worked in radio era after that. that. And you, his know, CDs you know what I've learned, Siobhan? That's interscope marketing. That stuff wasn't real. That was um, marketing, uh, them protesting, and all that outrage they was doing. That, the that, that was doing the pockets. That was that was marketing. You know really? what I'm saying? Because when you talk about that era and those quote unquote protests, it all mm -hmm. happened to be Interscope artists. That was marketing. That stuff was a ploy. Oh. This whole quote unquote uh, video getting banned and all that stuff. No, that's marketing. That's just a dog right. and pony show. It's not the truth. But right. again, those it makes same things happen in NWA. Those same things happen in NWA. Yeah, those same common things denominator, right? Those what's same things happen to Pac. What's the common denominator, bro? Dolores Tucker was Dr. out there leading the charge against Pac. That had nothing to do with them conspiring for record sales on that. I think. I think. <laughs> no, no, no. I think that you can you can start something and then other things will come in and start. It's a snowball effect. Like you know, Michael Jackson's my guy, my favorite artist ever. He started calling paparazzi and all of this stuff on himself. And that's what kind of gotten that whole ball rolling where it became organic. You can get those things started. You know what I'm saying? And then other people will chime in and it's like, okay, well, yeah, I'm going to stand for this. I'm going to stand for this. On, yeah. Mike. I'm I, serious. I, like, that's what it know, is. And again, really you show me like hip hop. Hip hop is a wide spectrum, right? You have everybody out here talking 
all kind of reckless stuff. It just happened to be all the Interscope artists that get these protests and people crushing tapes in the streets. Come on, Come on man. man. Conspiracy with that. They really let charges <laughs> of these people down. They really did. They and, really did. And, and all of these people you're talking about, Siobhan, they sold more records than everybody. Because they make good music, bro. No, <laughs> what are you talking about? Because they have great marketing as well. These people who oh, the Mike. protests were on ended up selling more records than everybody. Mike, that sounds ridiculous, brother. I know it sounds ridiculous, but it's the truth. <laughs> it's the truth. I agree or disagree with you on that. It's a, it's a show. It's a show. 